I think one of your other most probably memorable waves that turtle wave at cloud break. Oh, yeah, I wish I knew <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I so close, like right? So close. But um, what I was going to yeah. say was it's, you know, you're talking about feeling it, um, you're giving it 150%. Like that day, like I saw you, um, I was, again, I was, in, I had my shoulder injury. I was in the channel watching, I wasn't surfing, but I saw you and I, I saw you like, just your, how you were feeling that day. I could tell that you were hungry that day. And then um, when you got that wave, it was like, you know, be, between that and Ramones, you know, they were the two giant ones that you were like, so close to making that thing i mean just go through your mindset like leading up to that wave well i just had to put plastic fins in my board because i was doing a stunt job with the rock and them mark guys in Kauai on the new jungle cruise that was coming out and i didn't know if i was going to wrap in time to, to make well and the, the pa came over to me and said hey you guys are wrapped and i'm like huh and Mark still had to work. He couldn't make it to the swell. So I had <laughs> to, um, so I called Koa. I said, Koa, you should grab my boards, my stuff. So Koa packed my bags. I went straight from the airport in Kauai, straight to the plane, and went straight to Fuji. So I didn't, like, get to come home and uh, pack my own stuff. So whatever I had, I had. So when I was, I just knew from the last time I was in Fiji, I was not going to go there without, I don't care who you are, all these old toe paddle, who cares about that? The biggest wave out there, you're not catching it on the paddleboard. If you do, you're going to get super pounded right off the bat. And I was thinking, oh, yeah. I want to get one of those. Because I was with Parko in the channel in 2012, and I had Nathan's 7 on. I'm like, Parky, take me out there and tow me into one of these waves. He's like, oh, 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 yeah, let's do it. Okay. Parko was like, no problem, let's do it. Before we go over the wave. The set comes in, I'm like, oh my God. And another wave like that never came in after. And ever since then, I said, if I ever get the chance, I'm not even going to paddle in the beginning. I'm just going to go out the back and wait for a tow. And lucky thing, that day was a little bit unruly and it was kind of like a little bit windy in that. And I knew, for, I seen a couple waves come in in the morning and I started looking at the time. And I just took my time, took my time, went out. And um, I actually, Danilo, I told Danilo first, and then he got me on the rope. I got one, I could feel my board kind of weird. I'm like, God, I wish I didn't have these fins in here because it was kind of like, didn't feel like I wanted it to feel, you know? And uh, oh, when I seen that wave stood up, I just was like, I, first I told him, if there's a good one, I say go, just tow me in. I don't care who's going, just, just let me go. I'll surf around them or whatever I got to do when the barrel's big. And that thing stood up and I just, yelled to the top of my lungs like, okay 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 and uh <laughs> drop in drop uh, what i didn't want to do is i was seeing a lot of people with outrun the barrel like come out before the spit you know what i mean and i was thinking no way i'm gonna out catch a wave this big and not pull in you know what i mean so when i dropped into the wave it was sucking so hard and gnarly i went right first to like get down the to get down the transition because it was really it really went like below sea level yeah. way outside like if you watch the video when it first pops over the sea it barreling it was barreling like i never even seen a wave barrel before for, i don't know like 100 yards before it even got to me and then so i went and i went right and, and brushed off some speed and when i like kind of like turned up into it, i was like oh my goodness i don't know if i made the right decision here and uh <laughs> i was just thinking that yeah, let's go you know what i mean and i got there and like right where my board slid out is right where i was going to do another pump to like get back up high because i kind of went up down and it, but you can see the wave it, it goes like this and then it does like this thing right there like a i don't know it just did like a little balloon Ooh. and the board just maxed out i mean there's reasons people use stiff fins there's reason people use metal fins and g10 material because it doesn't uh vibrate like i think certain materials will vibrate too much it just my fins just i think stuck one way or the other and that was it and uh i went down and uh it was a beautiful sight tumbling on my back looking up i got to actually look at the roof of the way i mean those barrels are so big you don't really get to see what's like up there and i actually yeah. got to check it out for a while and roll you know and uh 
I just was like, this is going to hurt. Um, but that wave was wave of a lifetime as well, just to ride that wave, whether I made it or not. I mean, I got on it. You know how many people um, will never, ever maybe ride one of those waves, big wave circles, will never get a chance to be in a, on, on a wave like that. Just to be on it is a, is was a win for me. You know, I, I won a award for it. I got the white ball of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, yeah, that was a, probably one of the biggest colonies of my whole life. I came up. I didn't think I was coming up, actually. Um, it wouldn't let me up. I pulled the vest. I did all the stuff. Um, and uh, I wasn't coming up. It just kept pushing me down. It wouldn't let me get my head upright to swim up. It just kept pushing me down. Like, every time I tried to come up, I even did, like, a front roll underwater. And it just, like... Because that wave spins down the reef so fast, I think it just had me in this thing that was like following behind. It was like, I don't know, maybe an underwater tornado or something. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. And, and, and there was a moment there that I thought to myself, like, okay, if I if I pass out, I hope the boys get me before I die. Because there's a point where you can come back and they can revive you, Aaron Gold. And, but I was just hoping that if I did pass out, this was all going really fast in my mind. Like, okay, just yeah, hopefully they get me. I'm going to float up sooner or later. Get me before I die. And as soon as I thought that, like, I felt like as soon as I thought that, I broke the surface. <laughs> broke the surface. And the next wave was about two feet from my head, the lip. So I broke the surface, went to, like, look up to take a breath, and just got the lip directly to the face. I'll never forget the look. <laughs> Of how a big wave comes down like that and the lip goes like this before it hits and like kind of like fans out before it hits the water and just yeah. hit me right in my head, snapped my neck back and I didn't even try and swim. I just came up when I did and eyes was bleeding, my nose was bleeding, I was coughing up blood and Kai's like, get off, get off, Danilo lost the ski, Danilo lost the ski. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not getting off the ski. I was throwing up water and stuff, and that was the, that was the end of the day. I didn't even surf the next day. I watched Lori him catch those waves, and I was like, "I'm good." You know, I might not have made the wave, but I'm making it home. So that was a uh, yeah. That that was definitely an experience. 